So over the years, I have created and shared a few Ableton Live templates here. And this week, I actually revisited some of my earliest ones, uh, like my very first how to make trance number one, my happy trance years. Back then, my uh, mix mixing skills weren't quite where they are today. This week I actually used a few evenings. I sat down and I decided to give it, first I decided to give it a fresh remix, but I actually ended up re, sort of remaking the track into another track, well, based on the same um, sort of key, of course. I also wanted to give me a challenge of using only Ableton 12's uh, built-in uh, plugins and effects and all of that. The result, well, we can take a look at that, but I think we can uh, compare the older one that is uh, five years, just a few seconds, and then the new one, which we are going to take a look at today, and just see where we are at sort of mixing wise and stuff like that. So here is a uh, preview I had from the earlier video. So this is how the old one sounds. You can notice here that melodically it's maybe it sounds cool i don't know but when you listen to the actual mix everything is just more or less a mess uh, it's not really cohesive the uh, sounds sounds sort of mashed together and it doesn't sound clear mostly because of mixing of course and sound selection and i mean it's five years ago hopefully i have uh, <laughs> improved somewhat that resulted in this new how to make trance of 1.5 template so let's take a look at what we made or what I made. Let's just uh, preview it uh, a little bit first. <laughs> So it's in the so same sort of style, here is an another sort of part of the melody. Yeah, so that's what we are going to check out today. Notice that in this track I have actually less tracks but it sounds more defined and clear in my opinion i know the track is uh, around three minutes long so it's not really i don't think you can call a trance track a three minute track a trance track or well you could of course there are no rules but uh, yeah i would probably have fleshed out stuff a little bit more and had uh, a little longer build-ups and breakdowns this is sort of how I did it five years ago. Yeah, if I'm going to make a new sort of new template, I'm going to have those parts in it. If you look at the kick, it's uh, something that is built in Ableton Live. It's the uh, Vibrance kit. I haven't really done much to it other than EQing it because I uh, thought it was, you had this sort of room sound in it. So if I turn off the EQ here and turn on the EQ again, So I just wanted to get, get rid of sort of that room sound. I don't know if you hear it, but uh, that's that's basically that with the kick. The percussions here, the claps and the hi-hats and all of that stuff is uh, from uh, High Life samples. So they are free and uh, I will, of course, credit them with a uh, link. But I've done some stuff with the um, samples here because... Um, yeah, I didn't think they sounded that good. So if we just take a look at, for example, the hi-hat loop here. And if we double click the hi-hat loop, it opens up like this. And what I have done with it is that I have uh, reduced the transients a little bit. So you go here to transients, you select, uh, I think it's forward, and you adjust it with this uh, slider. So this is how it sounds normally. And this is with on the lowest setting. 
so it gets a little bit more tight and this is also something i have done with most of the other hi-hats here on the percussion uh, i also occasionally run run it through a uh, clipper i'm using the saturator in ableton live to do so and it's basically to just remove the peaks from the sound here for example the clap so uh, you have some more headroom going into the uh, final limiter here so i can show you that with a plugin for example if i use uh, yulin loudness meter and we can look at the clap sound here you see here we are at around yeah between minus 12 and minus 6 db and if i turn off the clipper here you can see it's uh yeah louder <laughs> so with the clipper we just clip off a little bit of the sound and uh yeah basically you get some more headroom in inside the limiter but you have to sort of use your ear so you don't crush it too much and it so it doesn't sound bad so it's a balancing act also on the percussion i have added a vocoder on some of them here so for example the hi-hat loop here to give it a little um sort of i don't know noise so if i turn off the vocoder it sounds like this and we have a little noise here what else you can do in this case uh, what i would do if i would spend like a lot of time on this i would for example do an lfo just uh, automate the dry wet knob here to get some movement in the track yeah so that's basically the percussion eqing it taking off some of the low end adding reverb on some of the stuff here just uh, yeah just to tighten it up and give some room for other stuff i don't necessarily remove the low end on everything if it doesn't have any information there i just leave it be so for the bass it's um yeah basically it's uh, one synth bass and one sub bass and in these cases i have already used presets that are in already existing in Ableton and I'm not sure if I change it I think I changed the synth bass a little bit it has a few macros here so you can change it but you can also of course go into the plugin itself to change if you want it's uh, this one is using wavetable bass is just uh, yeah basic sub and uh, a synth uh, bass like this with the kick it sounds like that and we are also doing uh, some side chaining on it. I have grouped the bass and added a uh, warm tube saturator here. Just to give it some more some more warmth and edge. In addition here I have some drones, one I call sub drone, one I call another drone. Um I'm not 100% happy with these, but uh, that's basically because I have a Moog behind me here and I wanted so badly to just put the Moog in here and just play it and it would sound great. But in context with the track, it fits pretty good and it doesn't really take over uh, anything. It's easy to get too much low end and you can't really get anything out from your track. So I'm pretty happy with the synthesizers in this track. It's uh, based, it's just two of them, two layers. So the, f the first one is based on uh, operator. Basically have a few effects here like reverb, delay, compressor, EQing, and also running it through a clipper. If we turn off all effects here, we can sort of hear how it sounds like. This is the basic raw sound. I think I have some kind of effect here also. Mid-range fattener and some other stuff. But if we turn on uh, everything like the reverb and EQ and everything, it sounds pretty cool. I also wanted to make sort of a dead mouse pluck type of thing and uh, that is used uh, using drift basically init patch because that's what it is 
after that it's just effects and uh, EQing, delay, reverb, compressor for side chaining and EQ8 and a little clipper then. So drift without any effect sounds like this. <laughs> And here it sounds like this. A lot in the low end there, as you can hear. But if we turn on the effects, we get the sound uh, I want. And I'm using the EQ here to remove uh, some of the low end and uh, increase the high end. It's the happy trance. <laughs> In the uh, earlier track, the How to Make Trance number one, I used a lot of arpeggiated um, synthesizers and uh, I have reduced that a little bit because I didn't think they, uh, well, they took up a lot of space and, oops, here something fall down. Uh, yeah, they took up a lot of space in the mix. So I just ended up having this. <laughs> it's not that, uh, Exciting. Yeah, maybe here. And I have basically removed uh, high past it pretty pretty hard here. And I have them in the intro here. That's basically it. So yeah, they uh, help with adding some atmosphere to the track. In addition to the uh, pads I have here, then you can see the high pass here. So I basically just want to have some stuff in the high end. Uh, on the master. I am not using a lot of things. It's basically some saturation and uh, some slight compression over here and EQing before it just goes into the limiter at the end here. If you take a look at the EQ, I can turn off the EQ. So one thing I noticed now that I actually wanted to do is to add another EQ here. Let's take off the side information on the low end. And let's go to... Uh There we go. So that's basically it. You will find a link to the template below. I also have my own sort of Patreon on my own site. So if you want to sign up to get access to some of my unreleased music or my entire music catalog while you support the stuff I do here, YouTube, music and everything else, you are welcome to do so. Let me know if you want me to do something similar with my remaining templates or maybe I should just make some new ones. That's all. See you in the next one. Goodbye.